I say I've got DLD to people, they're like, what's that? And the worst feeling that I've had is that I thought I'm, I'm literally, I'm dumb. There are about two children in every classroom who have DLD. So it's really common um, and yet most people have never heard of it. We all expect children to just absorb language and speech by osmosis. In fact, it's a very complicated process. And for some children, it just doesn't all come together. There's all these different terms that have been used, um, one of which is specific language impairment, one of which is language disorder, uh, language delay. Even as somebody within the profession, when I left university and started working with children with these difficulties, even I was confused, well hang on, people are using all these different terms and why is this the case? You find that it's difficult to get funding because nobody's heard of it. It's difficult to communicate with your colleagues because your colleagues are likely to think, um, they might be talking about something different from you. And in terms of getting the profile improved, um, you know, we really needed one, one term. You get a talkative taxi driver and they say, well, what do you work on? And I learned over the years that I had to say, well, it's a bit like dyslexia, it's a bit like autism. And then I started to think, this is ridiculous. Why have they heard of autism and they've heard of dyslexia? Why haven't they heard of this? Because it's as common um, and it is quite a serious condition. So this is something has got to be done. We had people from all different disciplines. We had mainly speech and language therapists who work with these kids, but psychologists, psychiatrists. You give them a set of statements about how you should identify and language disorders and how you should refer to them. And they have to rate them. Do they agree? Do they disagree? And then you feed back anonymously. So they have to give a sort of written justification of they're different from everybody else. You go through this process more than once and then you sort of home in on what are the things that people do agree with. We felt we should focus on children who had difficulties that were interfering with everyday life are likely to not just resolve spontaneously. And the term that we in the end settled on for describing those was developmental language disorder. DLD, I like that. Nice, short, simple, and it's just to the point. We think this is going to make a big change in how children's language problems are identified and already the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists has been uh, pushing hard for this new um, terminology to be adopted. By us working together with other partners, with Dorothy and others, to really develop that consistency of knowledge, um, we can support um, better understanding of how um, the practitioners on the ground can help to, to identify these children as well as meet their needs. Having a label hopefully is the currency to make sure that the kids are a commissioned for services, the therapists know an apple from a pear and will give a clear diagnosis and that the interventions we believe will give the better outcome for the children. It will put parents at ease because they're like okay my kid isn't silly, he's not misbehaving, he's not, he or she's not deliberately being silly and not answering the questions because they don't want to, it's because they physically don't understand. In 10 years time I'd like to stand there and say to someone, I've got DLD, and they'll go, oh yeah, I know what that is.